you were trying to explain this to me yesterday, and I need a full explanation. Okay, yeah. So this these new Qualcomm Snapdragon X Elite processors, not the first time Microsoft and Qualcomm have tried to make ARM-based computers. Uh, famously, they tried to make it in 2019 when they released this new computer called the Surface Pro X, which was mm -hmm. an ARM-based Windows on ARM. It's going to happen this time, guys, for real, for real. I wanted to be good. And they co-branded a processor with Qualcomm that they called the Microsoft SQ1. Around that time, Qualcomm had uh, released the Qualcomm 8CX processor, which is an awful name, and was made for Windows on ARM computers. However, at the time, nobody really wanted to sign on to Windows on ARM, specifically because it sucked. Um, Good yeah. reason. Yeah. yeah. Totally fair. <laughs> Qualcomm made like a lot of uh, fanfare about the fact that they their emulator, their like Rosetta-esque uh, translator emulator was like really good, really efficient. The problem was that it only worked with 32-bit x86 uh, Intel-based applications. And at that point in time, most professional applications had moved to 64-bit. Um, so you had this problem where like only super old apps were working on this translator. So you could use like the, the default Microsoft apps on the Surface Pro X, kind of, they kind of worked, and that was good. But if you tried to use like anything else that you download from the internet, just wouldn't run. Games usually just wouldn't run. If you could get them to run, the emulation would be so slow that it was basically unplayable. Extremely expensive computer. Uh, it was a lot better. It was like they made the design a lot better. They streamlined the bezels. They made it look really nice. It was good hardware. But considering it was an ARM-based PC, the battery life was like pretty bad. And there was just no reason why you should why you should buy a Surface Pro X over an Intel-based Surface Pro at the time. Mm. You mean it was bad for an arm piece yes right yeah yeah, yeah. Was, the surface pro x was also that like tablet -y... it was a surface yeah so the surface pro has always been the tablet that has the attachable oh, keyboard okay and so they made the surface pro x which was their attempt at windows on arm i remember seeing this yeah at microsoft that year yeah. but nobody was invested in windows on arm and i'm not sure if it was because it just sucked or what but like none of the oems wanted to get involved in it and so you pretty much only really saw like the Surface Pro X and maybe like one or other two com one or two other computers come out. Um, so <laughs> that was their first run in 2016, and then Apple did M1. 2019, I think 2019. Right. Sorry, yeah, yeah. yeah, 2019, not 2016. And then <laughs> Apple released M1 and has just been totally smoking them for like so many years now that they're finally like, okay, guys, we really, really, really need to actually make this happen. Guys, like for real this time. For we real this time, this. for real, for real. <laughs> this whole M chip thing is like pretty good over there. We yeah. should probably do something about it. I think this just showcases like the difference between vertical integration and being someone like Microsoft slash Qualcomm slash Asus slash ASRock, who is like all trying to work together to make something that works versus Apple who just makes everything themselves. Like, it's cool. I love the idea of separation um, and having all these different companies like come together to, because then you have choice, you have a lot of choice, but it makes it very hard to make these things work. There's clearly pros and cons of both situations. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, on Monday, they held an event in Richmond that again was like part Surface event because they did announce a new Surface Pro, which I think they just called the new Surface Pro, which yes. is funny. <laughs> Um, and then also a new Surface laptop in two different sizes. And these are primarily going to be ARM-based computers that run on the new Snapdragon X Plus and Snapdragon X Elite, which in a lot of synthetic benchmarks are eclipsing M3. And I actually went to a Qualcomm event um, like a month ago in which they showed me all of these benchmarks and they were specifically comparing it to M3. And it was before <laughs> M4, M4 dropped on the iPad. Yeah. And I think that's the whole reason that Apple put out M4 in its b most basal form on the iPad is just because they knew that Qualcomm was going to compare X Elite to all the M4 stuff or M3 stuff. And the X Elite uh, processors are specifically geared towards AI where, because they have 45 uh, flop <coughs> MPUs, um, which the M4. How many tokens is Those that? are words that mean things to me. <sighs> 
yeah. <laughs> they have a anyway. more powerful neural engine. Yeah, they're neural <laughs> engines. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, like, the Qualcomm neural engines are really, really beefed up, and I, I think that's exactly what Microsoft wants specifically, mm -hmm. too, because all of these features that are coming to Windows 11, and Satya is always like, we've entered the age of the AI PC, it's mostly based on that neural engine. Mm -hmm. Um so yeah, now the uh, now the M4 is out. M4 also has way beefier neural engines. It's mm -hmm. just we don't really know what it can do yet because Apple hasn't had the developer conference in which they release features. Oh, that we know what it can do. Engine. It can take pictures of documents and remove shadows. I that was actually the thing I was the most excited about. To be honest, it can do stem splits. It can stem awesome. split, which is kind of cool. Yeah, but like, I don't. know. I want to see what it actually does on computers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah, Microsoft's event was basically to like really showcase the X Elite and X Plus processors that are coming out. It was an OEM based event, so we got new laptops from Acer, Asus, Lenovo, Dell, HP, um, and uh, they announced some new features in Windows 11 that are AI focused. The the biggest one that most people are talking about is a feature called a recall. Yeah, this one's interesting. Which is interesting. Uh, I've heard from some sources that the that the internal name for this was Total Recall, ah. which is very funny and kind ah. of a nod to that movie. Uh, but this feature is basically, it takes snapshots of your screen every five seconds when there is something different on your screen. Mm -hmm. And it stores that in a cache. And, and then that's a lot of smarts, but also a lot of data. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I looked at you. That's perfect. <laughs> perfect. Perfect. And it uses all of those snapshots as contextual understanding of like what you're doing, what that page or window or whatever is. So that if you, I don't know, you were texting your friend or emailing your friend the other day, like, oh, what's that barbecue spot you like? And you don't remember the answer. You ask the recall feature when I bring up the email where I was talking to Jessica about that barbecue spot. And then it brings it up because it has this like list of things that you've been doing on your computer for a long period of time. Yeah. This is sort of the dream of what we want an AI assistant to be in a lot of ways, because it's just like, it knows everything that you've been doing and therefore yeah. you can really use it to help you. Yeah. It's like a superpower. Yeah. I think it's a pretty, a very interesting feature. I want to get, one of these laptops in to actually test and see how useful it actually is. Um, they're saying that all of the snapshots are encrypted and stored locally on your computer and never go to the cloud. Hopefully it doesn't come out that they're training their LLMs on it. Mm. Um, <laughs> I don't think it will, but we'll see. Mm -hmm. um, also, they give you a lot of control over it, so you can turn off Recall's ability to uh, scrape apps on an app by app basis if you want. So you can say never read my Gmail app or never read hmm. you know, Edge or whatever. Uh, and you can also just turn it off entirely if you want, but it is opt out. So there's that. Um, and Copilot is also getting more deeply integrated into Windows 11, like providing suggestions in the settings menu. Um, it can edit files in File Explorer for you. And they're also... Wait, can I butt in? Sorry, yes. I don't want to go too far away from recall because the first thing sure. I thought about sure, this sure, was sure. what I used yes, to do IT and being like, I wish every person in this <laughs> office had recall so when they could say like, I don't know what happened. It just, the screen just went blank oh, or like yeah. this happened. I could be like, I'm sure you didn't. And then <laughs> type in the thing that I told everyone not to do and watch them probably do that and break the computer by themselves. My dad always says that. My dad is like, the computer just decided to do this itself. And I was like, no, dad, that's no, not how the, computers yeah. This wouldn't help that. But one time, one of my bosses was like, the screen just went blank. And I came in and I was like, oh, that's weird. Like, he was like, I was just writing an email. And I looked down under his desk and the computer was like sideways on the ground. And I was like, do you usually keep it like laying down like that so you don't knock it over and he's like, like oh no it's david usually does. stint what like how david does <laughs> it was like a tower like but some people did on their desk put it like that and he was like oh no it's usually standing up and i was like uh, so you kicked it in the face <laughs> i was like got it so it probably probably got knocked over huh he's like yeah i guess and then i, guess I like so. put it back up and plugged it in the back <laughs> he's like whoa thanks man and i was like holy yeah, yeah i don't know what happened Gosh. yeah yeah yeah, yeah so I don't know. I, th I think this is a super interesting feature, assuming people aren't too creeped out by it. Um, mm. Yeah. People are pretty creeped That's out. That's a big assumption. That's really? a big assumption. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. I would I would like to see if it's actually useful, though. Because, like, I don't know. There's a I lot of AI cool. features that come out that are, like, in this very 
explicitly specific instance, it could be useful. But this is something that's sort of just like there. And if you ever have a question, you could look it up. And I feel like that's kind of nice. This is how I could see it is it comes on. There's people who are going to opt out because they think it's creepy. And then they're going to hit a scenario where they're like, dang, I wish <laughs> I had really that on. Yeah. I really could have used that. And then I bet they turn it on. Yeah. What is that scenario, though? Because for me, it's looking for memes that we talk about. <laughs> Do I really want this turned on to find the meme find we the spoke meme about last which... week? <laughs> that yeah. yeah, I mean, like find a deleted tweet that you saw, and you're like, oh, that was really funny, but now it's deleted, or like I didn't even think about that. The worst point. thing about Ooh. Threads is that when you open Threads and you you like instinctively go to refresh it, but then you see the first thread on the page, and you're like, oh wait, I'm kind of interested in that, and then it refreshes the whole thing, and you're like, you that happens on Twitter see, also. You will never see that ever again. What's Twitter? That's. <laughs> Or, I mean, I've had YouTube also where something's been on the recommended page on the front. And, like, as I'm clicking refresh, yeah. I'm like, wait, oh, wait, what was that one? And I'll never find that video ever again. Yeah. yeah. Recall. Yeah. Recall. Yeah. It solves all the terrible social media that UX designs. You but. could literally be like, what was that fire post that I just missed while I refreshed? And I'm like, yeah. Oh, you meant this one. Yeah. So I'm I'm very interested in how Intel responds to all this because Intel is just like an aging, aging, aging company that like Qualcomm and ARM were always going to be the future, right? Like obviously phones got faster and had better battery life. And that's obviously what we eventually wanted for computers. And Apple did it and it worked. And so now Microsoft and all of their OEMs are like, all right, we're really, really putting our best foot forward this time. And this is actually going to be for the future. And it is nice to see that a lot of OEMs are actually making a bunch of laptops that are uh, that are X Elite powered because last time it was pretty much just Microsoft and the, the one laptop they released for it sucked. So these laptops look sick. They look good. I want like five of them. Yeah. The so Surface laptops? Are yeah. So we can talk about included? the new updates. Um, there's a new Surface Pro, which again, they're just kind of calling the Surface Pro. It's the first time they've put an OLED panel in the Surface Pro as an option. Although the OLED panel does add $500, um, mm -hmm. which is quite a lot. Uh, but it is available with the... Wait, it, no, no, no. But you also get the, the upgraded chip with that $500 yeah, you get too. Yeah, you get the XLE version. Oh, so it's not yeah, only it's a not $500 upgrade. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, true. Dave. Okay, okay, yeah. Yeah, there's the X Pro chip and the X Elite chip. The X Elite chip is a lot more powerful. Um, so it's nice to get the OLED in there. And then they also announced a new Surface Flex keyboard. So prior, the Surface, the Surface Pros were like, they would be a tablet and you would attach this keyboard that was also kind of like a folio. We've mm -hmm. seen that happened in every tablet known to man at this point mm -hmm. um, but the keyboard had to be attached to the computer in order for you to use that as keyboard now you can wirelessly use it when you take it off of the tablet which is kind of nice that's one of those cool. things that felt like it should have just been happening the whole time yeah but they never had a battery in the keyboard it was just okay. powered by the pins i also like that the keyboard <clears throat> it looks like there's an alcantara version and i kind of miss the the old Surface laptops that had that option. The Alcantara, yeah. yeah. Yeah, the Alcantara was nice. I have a question, David. Sure. About the Surface Pro. So is the Snapdragon X Elite uh -huh. a like sort of unified platform in the same way that Apple's ARM platform is, where the memory and the, st and the storage and the motherboard and the graphics processor are all like on one yeah, board? Yeah, I, I believe so. Okay. Then assuming that is true... Uh, you can only put 16 gigs of RAM in this thing, which makes it not a very pro device. Do you have the super fast mem? Does it seem like we'll get the super fast memory swap on this that renders RAM a little bit less useful? Or is this another Microsoft product that they're calling a pro product and then just expecting people to uh, yeah. go make a sandwich? Microsoft pro products have pass? literally never been pro products, almost ever. The Surface Pro series has never been fast. Yeah. So... You know, mm -hmm. it's more about the flexibility, I guess. I'd forgotten all about the, I knew they had some sort of tablet, but I forgot it was called the Pro. So when you said Surface Pro before, I just assumed it was like, the, I just Surface always think it's just laptop. like the nicer laptop oh, yeah. seven or whatever. No, it's the but tablet like the that has the touchbook. I'm super excited about this thing. As someone who at home uses their Asus ZenBook Fold and really enjoys it, this just seemed mm. like a better version of that. But without, like, what am I supposed to do with 16 gigabytes of I can floss my teeth with 16 gigabytes of RAM. You know what I mean? That's Wait, nothing. This has 32 gigs. I'm specking one out right now, and the highest option is... Do you have X-Elite? X -Elite. Yeah. Hold on. Let me double check all this. Okay. Um, well, like that new... Chrome tabs? 
The new Surface Flex keyboard is very cool. However, it is three hundred and fifty dollars, yeah. um, which is the same price as the Apple thirteen-inch iPad Magic, Magic keyboard. keyboard. I was wrong. You can't which... spec it up to thirty-two gigs. Okay, thirty-two. Right. Okay, cool. My bad. You yeah. floss your teeth with that. But yeah. again, <laughs> again, the Surface Pros have never been like yeah. pro devices. Also, just saying, the second highest tier option is called Dune. Instant. Uh, isn't that just the color? Oh, f I'm. <laughs> Misinformation king over here. <laughs> later, I'm off the podcast. <laughs> Wait, also, i am got a thing up right here that says Surface Pro Flex Keyboard with Slim Pen, $449. Is that because you're getting it with the pen? Is there a way is to it, buy is it the, the pen? the pen? Like 90 bucks? Wow. Or maybe if you buy it with the computer. It's I keep cheaper. also reading this as Slime Pen, and slime it's pen. so much more interesting than Slim Pen. 450 is insane. Yeah. That's a lot. I don't know. Yeah, it's it's a lot of money. And I just got to say, both to Apple and Microsoft, stop charging $350 Andrew, for a Andrew, let's be real. You've spent more on keyboards. Do you know how sick yeah, of a keyboard I could build for $450? Yeah, yeah, that's true. It's not the same thing. Like, Maybe I should do a short of crap. that. This is extortion. Like, how much keyboard can you get? Especially I want to build on the Surface Pro, you can barely use that as a computer without one of the keyboards. You kind of need it. But and you that's can get also the cheaper true about the iPad, one. but it's like yeah. the iPad Pro. It's literally called the Pro, but like most people. But the need. iPad is also focused around using it as like a touchscreen tablet device, and like adding the keyboard is sort of like I want to make this a computer now. Whereas a Microsoft tablet is not as useful. Windows is not that useful as a tablet. It's just they try they try to make it that way, but. It's just not. It's mouse and keyboard first. Yeah. yeah. I have to say they do a good job at showing some examples of where this now new wireless keyboard would be uh, like nice. One of them is in here. He has like the tablet on a coffee table with the kickstand and he's using it on his lap. But like that would be awesome on a plane because now I have it on the thing, but yeah. I'm not the one typing my keyboard, making the guy's seat in, in front lap. of you, like yeah. shaking, put in your lap. And then he also has this cool situation where he has the tablet semi propped up using the stylus, mm. but then he still has the keyboard to the left with his left hand to do shortcut keys. That's cool. I bet Tim would find that pretty interesting. Yeah. Except it's Windows. Yeah. I figured it out. You, as of on the pre order page, you could only pre order it with 32 gigs of RAM oh. if you choose the platinum color. The pro platinum? The most otherwise, boring color. Yeah. Otherwise, if you choose sapphire, black, or dune. Why is this? We were just talking about this with Apple. If you get the pro versions of things, you get boring, color. boring colors. Yep. It's because those are the most popular colors by far. But I do. Because you don't offer us better colors. Mystic anymore. bronze. <laughs> Mystic bronze. That's an old, an old one. Okay. Callback. Callback. <laughs> okay. In the laptop, we also have a new Surface uh, laptop, and there are two sizes, um, which is nice. They, they made the smaller size slightly bigger. It's now 13.8 inches, and there's also a 15 inch, also both OLED. Mm -hmm. both 600 nits not tandem not tandem <laughs> uh starts at 16 gigs of ram with 256 gigs of storage for 99 9.99 i also want to say in order to use recall you have to have 50 gigabytes of storage available okay which if you buy the 256 gigabyte model That's that means you only really have two two which is kind of less than probably less yeah. than 200 because the os takes up mm -hmm. storage you're probably only really going to have like 150 gigs now the benefit of the Surface Laptop is that there's a slot, and I think on the Surface Pro as well, there's a slot on the back where you can swap out the memory extremely easily. Um, you can add in memory just on the back of the computer. Memory or storage? Storage, sorry. Okay, yeah, sorry, yeah. storage, not RAM, sorry. That's good, because I floss my teeth with 150. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what that, how that analogy would work. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Such a it's, so thin, it's so thin that you Look, could. It's, yeah. so, it's like it's, nothing. It's nothing. It's, it's, nothing. it's worthless. It's 150 like I, gigs? I wake up and I blow my nose and 16 gigs of RAM is <laughs> right out. One thing really cool that I think is also worth pointing out, Dave2D pointed it out in his video, mm -hmm. is the bottom of the screen now is rounded. So yes. all four edges are rounded. And I never noticed oh, that. And God. now I can't not see that on my MacBook. Yeah. I was about to that say that not rounded the, the MacBook bottom. is rounded at the tops, but on the bottom it's not. It's I what never noticed and now this? it bothers me so much. <laughs> <laughs> never this is made. Made. So noticed. you don't notice it as much on the MacBook because most of the apps round the corners on the bottom and then the dock makes it so the app isn't full screen unless you're using full screen mode. But yeah. it's a lie. But you just don't notice. But yeah. What background am I using? 
they're darker on the bottom, they're, so it's harder to the see. The backgrounds are always darker on the bottom. Apple so designers, hard. yeah, they, they know, know what they're, they're doing. doing. They, they've been hiding. They've, those. It's, it's like hiding when the notches. Notch yeah, yeah. yeah, when the when the iPhone, they still do it. Yeah, when the iPhone 10 first came out with the notch, they Dark intentionally the made yeah the wallpaper is gradient to to darkness. Oh, yeah. Notch yeah. or dynamic island. Well, it was a notch there. Well, now there. Yeah. they still yeah. kind of like. Creatively hide the dynamic island with darker colors, but they are a little bit less uh, They're more about it. It's like yeah. a feature now, so they want to show it off. A it's little the bit. discerning difference in yeah. the like new Like AI iPhone. is hallucinating. Yeah. It's a feature. Not a bug. <laughs> <It's> a feature. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Enjoy yeah. it. So the laptop for me is a lot more interesting than the Surface Pro um, in this scenario because they actually upgraded like a lot of things on the laptop that is very nice. Um, they now have a haptic touchpad very similar to the MacBooks. So it's kind of the same thing where there's not actually a physical button, right. but it's a motor that presses back on you. I'm very interested in seeing if that's comparable to the MacBooks touchpad. It's probably about the same, which is pretty cool. Um, there are now two USB-C and one USB-A, whereas prior, I believe it was one USB-C and one USB-A. Uh, and then they have the Surface Connect charger on the right. And they're saying that it can get up to 22 hours of video playback, which is pretty comparable Sounds with the MacBooks. pretty good. Yeah. And this is kind of their big move to unse try to unseat the MacBook Air as the most popular computer in the world, basically. Because um, the MacBook Air just sells like hotcakes because everything about it is incredible. Yeah, it's already... I mean, like, I, I loved my surface laptop i don't remember which one it was because all of them look exactly the same which i don't think is a bad thing i think it's a really sleek nice looking laptop mm -hmm. i love traveling with it it was small it's way easier to carry around than this thing yeah. um the problem it will never beat the macbook air but that's not of its own fault it's that windows has a million competitors it's just like why one android phone is never going to beat an iphone could it's I, like there's way too many different ones to pick from and different price points where if you just want a careful, Mac? Andrew, careful. You just mean in pure sales. In pure sales. Yeah. yeah. I think it's... Semi, oh, yeah, yeah, sorry. That's what I... It's yeah. semi-comparable to the Pixel because Google makes Android just like Microsoft yeah. makes Windows, and then they have a flagship device that they want to show off that OS on. And I don't think normal people care about that. I agree. And they do their best um, as far as vertical integration, but it's never quite as complete full stack as like yeah. Apple's mm -hmm. top to bottom right. thing. Well, right. this was my question to you yesterday, David, because mm -hmm. I also think the Surface line is very similar to the Pixel line. And mm -hmm. Google eventually started making Tensor, their own chip. Yeah. And I was asking if you think Microsoft will eventually make well, their own chip. Well, they tried to make their own chip with the SQ1, which was like a custom design chip with Qualcomm, which is basically exactly what Google did with Tensor because Sna uh, because uh Samsung actually made the chip for them, but they designed it. So it was similar where like Microsoft had a lot of input in the design of the processor for the co-branded chip, the SQ1. Um, I could see them eventually doing that just because they're investing so much in AI that I could see them being like, we want our own chip that Qualcomm will manufacture, but we will like design. I'm sure every major tech company is basically like, we would like to make our own chip. Yeah, at some I point. mean, OpenAI is trying to make their own chip. So, yeah, which is crazy. Him. Uh, <laughs> him. <laughs> Timothy. That's a great, yeah. <laughs> they also made the Surface laptops a little bit thicker in the middle so that they could put the Snapdragon X Elite chip, the best one, in it. Um, so now when you buy a Surface laptop, you, you get, like, the fastest new ARM-based processor that there is. Okay. Theoretically... These X Elite processors are extremely good at emulation, have extremely good battery life, and can run everything. Hopefully, they took their blunders from last time and actually made a translator that is just as good as Rosetta. They say it's just as good as Rosetta too. So I really, really am interested in like trying to play games on this thing, right? Because if you want to play Valorant on on this, like it's an ARM-based computer, can I emulate it that well? Mm -hmm. You know, like on my MacBook Pro, I play Dota 2 and I get 144 FPS out of it. Now, that is compiled natively for Linux and for Mac, which is cool. Um, but it's going to be interesting when it sits emulating. Yeah. So, yeah. It was a pretty big event that had, like, a lot of stuff in it. I think the big things were uh, the new chips, recall, and the refreshed computers. And there's also a bunch of computers from all those other OEMs. So there's a lot of articles online if you want to go check out those other laptops as well. I think it's, like, comparing these. I know everyone wants to be like, this is the MacBook killer or the macbook air like this is going to be better than the macbook air but i i feel like microsoft mostly should just want to take over the windows segment of laptops like they are also compared competing against 
Dell partners. and HP and all of their other partners, which I guess they still, you know, are making money off them if they're probably more money off them. Yeah, you don't want more piss money. That's insane. a good point. But like, if yeah. they want to be the laptop of Windows, like that feels like the better. Well, they have the same issue that Google has, right? They make Android and they rely on other manufacturers, especially in countries where Pixel is not that popular. But also want to beat them? Yeah. <laughs> or it's, even it's like available. A, weird... a lot of people always met, tweeted us and stuff saying that right. Pixels aren't even available in a lot of right, countries. Right, totally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so that's I think that's why they're like available on Pixel only for three months. And then everyone gets it because they want other people to they want these other OEMs to be incentivized to still make phones yeah. and not turn out like HTC or LG and, and that may, making devices. Yeah, and that may that may also a little bit be uh, to avoid the little antitrusty stuff where you can't just, I mean you can but you'll get sued if you just build a whole bunch of things only for yourself. Right. Kind of like the way Apple has, like with the Apple Watch. Yeah. 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 But it's also like Google makes most of its money on Google Play services. And that just means the more Android devices you have in the wild, the more money you're going to make no matter who makes it. So yeah. that's the reason that they haven't really cared about the Pixel that much until fairly recently. Hmm. Um, and now I think the only reason they're really caring about the Pixel is because the iPhone market share is just skyrocketing so much. So yeah, I think Microsoft's doing a great job with all these laptops. And it's not just the laptops they're putting out, but in that sense of like being the easier to recommend laptop they're going into best buy stores and making really good displays that are simple these laptops look really nice mm -hmm. they are like the same company making the operating system and the actual computer and like they're making it just seem way friendlier and i i don't know i've always liked the surface stuff even though mm -hmm. i switched to a macbook i gotta say the sapphire and the dune colors are really good looking they're really nice and Sick. Honestly, it's like it's just exciting to have a viable Windows option now because the only use case in buying a Windows computer in the past has been like, one, if you need one for work because you run certain applications that only run on Windows. Two, you need backwards compatibility with old Windows stuff, which is a lot of people. And three, uh, I'm trying to remember the third one. You're a rebel. You're a rebel. <laughs> you want to use your... Oh, gaming. You... Gaming computers. Mm. Because you want like yeah. a really good GPU and also because most games are Windows and, and or Linux only. And, and generally Windows only. And DirectX, DirectX. is backwards <laughs> compatible all the way, baby. Yeah, DirectX. If you want to be like me and use your Surface laptop at the Apple event. Yeah. It's always a fun one. And be the only one who got Wi-Fi that one time. So that was also yeah. fun. True rebel. If you want Wi-Fi <laughs> at an Apple event. Yeah. Get a Surface laptop. I got to say, I am extremely <laughs> lucky that the only video game that I play is natively available on Mac <laughs> because nice. otherwise I would really need a Windows computer. I don't know. I got to say like it's really nice that outside of those use, use cases you can now like think about buying a Windows because I like we were saying earlier I really like Windows 11 and it runs a lot of things really well and they also partnered with a bunch of very popular uh, application makers like Adobe. A bunch of Adobe apps are now natively compiled for ARM64. Um, DaVinci Resolve is now com natively compiled for ARM64. CapCut's now compiled for M64. And Resolve has a lot of AI features in it now. And they showed me some demos when I was at that Qualcomm event the other day. And it it processes those AI, like it's like AI tracking and like masking and stuff in real time. And it's really, really fast. Nice. Um, I imagine once M M4 and M4 Pro and M4 Max come to these laptops and they have all of these uh, AI features, they're probably also going to accelerate those kind of tasks in things like tracking in Final Cut. Um, it's just cool. And also having Windows computers have good battery life finally is, uh, is yeah. really nice. I think it's funny that your example was maybe you want you need it for work when mine's the exact opposite as my work computer is my mac stuff and i, I was running Same. a windows laptop and a windows computer at home but now that my too so that's why yeah i mean the laptop not yeah, playing games on it but i just like windows better yeah me too the fact that though this is just my work computer and that i can take it home it's just easier to do everything on the same computer that's going to translate to when it's at mm. work but yeah i yeah. like windows yeah team windows so, yeah hashtag yeah, and having a bunch of computers that are actually good yeah. is going to be yeah. Yeah, like really great. Yeah. Who'd have thunk it? So thunk? I'm really, really hoping that it doesn't turn out like the 8CX scenario. Um, I don't think it will, but we'll have to see. So. Hey, thanks for watching this clip. Uh, if you haven't already, like what? we haven't. Yeah, we have not. We should probably watch that movie. I ain't got time for that. The whole movie? I'm just going to live it soon. It's out already. Here, how about I watch the first 10 minutes? Okay. You watch the second 10 minutes. And then Gemini 
We'll summarize. It summarizes the rest. the rest of it. For yeah, us. and then when we come back, we'll we'll basically understand. But it. Do you know how many movies I could watch? That's kind in of in this situation. I feel like that's a good idea. Have you seen Total Recall? No. From no. the the new feature Recall. I watched what's, the first ten minutes though. What's really funny is that Total Recall is a movie about implanting false memories in people. Like you're like, oh, I want to go to Spain, but Inception. I don't actually want to go to Spain. They just put memories of you going to Spain in your brain. Oh, I've seen Inception. Why did I think Total Inception? Recall was like a Rambo movie? I don't think movie. that's Inception. Inception's kind of like that. Whoops. I don't think so. It's kind of like that. <laughs> <laughs> I just I just looked kinda. at Total Recall and this is the screenshot that came up from the movie. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh if yeah, Inception, you, you plug things in your head too. If yeah. you agree with me about the plot of Inception, like this video. If you agree with Marquez about the plot of Inception, leave a comment on this video. What's Inception? Either way, if you're not we watched subscribed. together on the bus. Yeah. Yes, we have. Really? Yeah. That's kind of yeah. cute. Oh, frisbee things. Yeah. <laughs> Subscribe to this channel. Thanks. Ooh.